Y'all, today we are so fired up, and if we haven't had the privilege or honor yet of meeting you, uh, my name is Daniel, and this is my beautiful wife, Jackie, and we have the incredible privilege and honor alongside of our leadership team as well to serve and lead and be a part of this incredible yes. church. And honestly, the church is not the four walls. It, it, is, it is not just West Houston, Cinco, Woodlands, Tanzania. Y'all do know we have a Hope City, Tanzania. I mean, it's a... Right? Not Tanzania, Missouri. Tanzania, Tanzania. The real one. The real one. And then we have literally hundreds of thousands of people that tune in and watch all over the world. We are a church, uh, one church, multiple locations, and we are honored to be a part of it with you. Yes, but welcome. It is a special day. Special day. We are celebrating seven years as Hope City. Amen. Can, can I ask a question? Yes. Do you call it an anniversary or a birthday? Because, like, I want to sing happy birthday to you. Yeah, come on. I'm going to say that. Happy. Because it doesn't sound like happy anniversary to you. <laughs> it is both. So give yourselves a hand. Happy yes. birthday. Happy anniversary. All right. So we are going to jump right into our celebrations yes, today because it's a big day, but we want to talk about the foundation yeah. that Hope City has been built upon and the strength in that and then where we're going with that, what God is still continuing to build on. Now, how many of you in here like chips and salsa, oh. chips and guacamole, Praise chips and God. queso, right? How could you this not like, raise your hand? Like I'm a little Oprah's disappointed. favorite things. Like people start passing it out like, no, no, no. We're not passing it out. Not yet. Not yet. So, as amazing as they are, how many of you know that we get a little elevated when we talk about seven-layer dip, Ooh. right? Oh we God. take those good ones into... He's getting really excited. Anna Sorry there. about that. He's stirring them all together. He's in sour there cream. There is a big difference between just chips and salsa and then when you put all the goodness together, right? It is elevated. So we're not just going to talk about the one layer of Hope City's foundation. We're going to talk about seven, seven. Right. layers Let's that go. we have been building upon for the last seven years because seven is exceptionally significant. And in the Bible, the number seven literally means completed or completeness. Yeah. And sometimes in our humanity, we think, oh, completed, that means, or completeness, there's a period at the end of the sentence. Every beginning has an end, and every ending has a new beginning. It does not mean momentum has stopped. We're redirecting right. momentum. So we're going to be unpacking seven layers of our foundation. Creative team would just, they turned down my request to just do a scoop of seven layer dip in everybody's hands as they came in. Just waiting in your seat. Just standing there like, we what said do I do no. with it? Yeah, we no. got to be careful with that. <laughs> Um, so we're going to, if you're taking down notes, which we always encourage you to, it will be on the screens as well, but we're going to talk about the seven layers. But before we do, um, I was thinking about a story. So we have four kids, uh, Brecken's 13, Finley's 11, uh, Daphne is five and Foxman is two and a half. And so, uh, there was a story, uh, about a little girl, everybody say fully convinced, fully convinced. because our first layer that we're going to talk about, and you can write this down is faith in Jesus. This is our first layer. This is the foundation. Everything we do is built upon Jesus. And we're fully convinced that Jesus still is the same yesterday. Come on, somebody. Today Amen. and forever. Yeah. That the answer begins with and always ends with Jesus. That is our foundation. Nothing else. Not production. Not strong systems. Because strong systems are important. But strong systems don't break down strongholds. Right. We need Jesus in the name of Jesus, and that is our foundation. So we're fully convinced. You can clap. That's okay. Uh, so say fully convinced. So there's a little girl who uh, was hearing in her, her church, and by the way, if you have kids in Hope City Kids, uh, they're not just singing songs and doing veggie tale moments. They're actually growing in the word as well. So from kids all the way up to the main uh, auditorium, and we're learning Bible, and we're learning about the foundation of Jesus. Well, this little girl on this specific Sunday, they were talking about Jonah and the whale, and she was so fired up. She told her parents about it. She was so excited. Well, the next day, she goes to school, and her teacher says, hey, today we're going to talk about fish. We're going to talk about whales. And she's like, what? I didn't learn about it yesterday, and now today. Like, I, I am God's favorite. Like, she was so excited. And so the teacher's like, did you know a whale's esophagus is so small that it would have a very difficult time swallowing a human being? And she's like, what? Because she's fully convinced. Say fully convinced. She's fully convinced. So it came time for question uh, time. And so, man, her hand was lifted. Kids are asking ridiculous questions, like, do whales wear pants and, like, stuff like that. She's like, hey, what about Jonah and the whale? And the teacher said, say that again? She said, Jonah and the whale. She's like, I don't know 
What are you talking about? She's like, you know, God said, Jonah, go to Nineveh. He's like, nope. And he went the opposite way. So God sent the big fish of the whale to swallow him up. And then he hung out in the belly of the whale for three days and played on his iPhone. That's where her theology was a little, maybe the message translation. Okay. And so the teacher was like, I'm sorry. So where did you read this? Where did you learn this? And she said, uh, the Bible. And the teacher said, oh, honey, you can't believe fictitious books. Say fully convinced. So again, our first foundation is built on Jesus, and we're fully convinced that is the rock of our salvation. So it came time for more questions. And man, her hand was high. Her hand was high. And the teacher's like, you've already asked a question. She said, ma'am, this is not a question. This is a statement. <laughs> and she said, okay. She said, one day when I get to heaven, I'm going to walk straight up to Jonah, and I'm going to ask him, what was it like to be in the belly of the whale? Did you learn something about obedience? Mic drop. <laughs> And the teacher's like, okay, okay, if you're going to get sassy like your mom, hold on. What if Jonah didn't go to heaven? What if Jonah went to the other place? What if Jonah went to hell? Then what are you going to do? And she goes, oh, well, then you'll have to ask him. All right. All right. Welcome to Hope City. This is real leadership. Our foundation is built on Jesus. It's just the Bible says in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 27. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine puts them into practice is like the wise man who built his house on the rock. The reason our first layer is built on Jesus is because that is the bedrock. That's the foundation. The rain came. We know all about that in Houston. We know about natural disasters between Harvey and other threats of weather. And then we also understand spiritual warfare. The winds came, the, rose, uh, 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 the, the streams rose, the winds blew, beat against the house, yet it did not fall. Why? Because its foundation was built on the rock. 26, though, is sobering. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man. Look at the person next to you and say, don't be like that guy. Yeah. Who built his house on the sand. The rain came, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash for seven years, since the very beginning, when two people said yes to the call of God on their lives, can we honor the Fosters for saying yes? Seven, seven years ago. And from day one, they always would say this, this phrase, and you've heard it, and if you've been around Hope City for any amount of time, you're gonna to continue to hear this. This church was always God's, it always will be God's. It's never been about an individual. This is God's church. Hebrews chapter three, verse four, one of my favorite verses in the Bible says it this way, for every house is built by someone. That's our yes. That's us saying, let's do this. There's a fresh wind behind the sail. There's vision. What's it say? But the builder of all things is God. Come on, can we give God praise that this is his church and will always be his church? Good. It's good. And Colossians two, verse seven goes on to say, let your roots grow down into him, yes. into Jesus. Yes. So this is saying that we have to plant our roots, not in the things that are temporal or temporary, but we have to plant our roots into Jesus, that Jesus alone is the only foundation that we will be able to stand upon. And it says, and let your lives be built on him. So we build right on top of that foundation, right? And then it goes on to say, then your faith will grow strong because you have a strong strong, rooted foundation in the only thing that's unshakable, in the only thing that so. will not be moved as storms and frustrations in life come because you're rooted in the right place. Amen? Amen. Strong in the truth that you were taught and you will overflow with thankfulness. We find gratitude in the midst of frustrations and hard times in trusting moments because we know, nope, I got my faith in Jesus. Cool. I don't have my faith in my circumstance. I have my faith in my Jesus. Yeah. Amen. And I know that I'm grounded and I'm stable. One of the things that we absolutely just love and always have loved about our Hope City Church is we are a people that are unwilling to back down from our faith. We will fight. Amen. We will contend. Um. Hope City strong. To see Jesus magnified. Amen. Smith Wigglesworth said that great faith is the product of great fights. Mm. And one thing that we have always stood on and we have always been committed to is challenging you to greater depths in your faith, yeah. greater depths in your confidence in Jesus. The enemy is always going to be willing to fight you for your faith. 
always. So we got to be even more willing, y'all. We got to be willing to say, no, no, it doesn't matter what you say to me, enemy. You may not tell me that it is silly to stand on this. You may not tell me that I can't trust God for this. You may not tell me that I can't trust in something I can't see. I trust my God. We have to be willing to fight for our faith. Come on, is there still fight in us, Hope City? Let's celebrate together. After each layer, we're going to celebrate. Let's celebrate together as we continue to grow in our faith with Jesus. All right, second layer of taking down notes. Second layer, and y'all will unanimously agree from Cinco Woodlands. If you're watching online, if you're in the room today at West Houston, our second layer of foundation has always been and always will be built on worship. And worship is such a foundation of ours because, again, it's not just a karaoke moment. We don't just come in, and there's a little bit of a misconception in Americanized Christianity that says, well, worst case, I can just miss the worship. Y'all realize this is where the Holy Spirit begins to stir? This is where you walk in and you were feeling depressed and oppressed and insecure and frustrated, and you can lift your hands to God, sing on key or off key, he still loves it. Clap on beat, have no rhythm at all, he still loves it. And we come in week in and week out, and we're building on the foundation of worship Because the truth is the reward of worship is not blessings. That's a bonus because we're his kids. The reward of worship is his presence. This is what the Bible says in Psalms 100, verse, uh, Psalms 100, one through four. Shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Let me hear somebody shout. Come on. This is a party. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. Know that the Lord is God. It is he who made us. We are his. We are his people the sheep of his pasture. So enter his gates with thanksgiving in your hearts and enter his courts with praise. Now watch this. Today we're also making history, not only seven years, but the entire set list today was all Hope City originals. There's a sound being released. Heaven is still touching earth in Houston, Texas. And not only is the region going to be changed and blessed, the nation's going to know about it. And the world is going to be singing because the foundation of Hope City has been and always will be built on worship. And Psalm 150 verse 6 says, let everything that has breath. There isn't anything that is breathing that is excluded from that. Except cats. Is that wrong? Should I not have said that? A deeper theology than we're ready to go into right now. However, I'm sorry. Should I everything, have everything that right, everything. has breath, <laughs> praise the Lord. And it goes on to say it again. Y'all can ignore it. We're moving on. Praise the Lord, right? But can we convince people oh, theologically? No. I don't that think we can. Maybe it was a cat that tricked Eve in the garden. Can I say that? <laughs> Where's all the cat lovers at? Come on, let me. Okay, all right. I'm please proud of you for me. remaining please proud. Please forgive me. Where's all the dog fans at? Okay, cool, cool, cool. But did you see the difference? Oh, Cat people were like, sit down. And dog people were like, oh, all let's get. right. All right, let everything that has breath get back to the theology. Come on. Everything that has breath. Cats this is included. what the word says. Everything that has breath, praise the Lord. And it says it again. Praise the Lord. It is not, it is not a suggestion. It is a command. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord because worship represents a heart that truly understands that we can worship God in the midst of circumstance. We can worship God with the knowing that we don't have to see the final result before we can trust that God's still moving. We don't have to stop and wait and say, God, I'm going to wait to trust you when you've proved yourself now he's proved himself time and time again and that is why we worship that is our act of faith that says i will step into your presence god and i will surrender and i will show you my gratitude it was the whole cat thing that really just reminded me why we love the lord because god is good and that is why we worship That is why we surrender ourselves. It is the place where we find our peace, is in the presence of God. Our roots in ministry, they go back to a beginning in worship leading. We started in worship, but our stability today and every day, your stability, no matter where you started in life, no matter where you are right now, your stability in life is tied to your personal worship. That's good to the moments when you sit alone with the Lord and you say, God, I surrender it all. This is on my heart. I give it to you. God, I adore you. I am grateful for you. I surrender to you, Father. I give you the worship. That's where your stability is. And that's where you'll find your footing.
So we started uh, our, our early years in ministry. I was a worship pastor in my 20s, and we were a part of a college church that went from 30 to 2,500 people. And it was amazing. And I remember standing up on stage and, and just to let you in on a little bit of my personal story. And I was leading worship, and I looked out in the crowd, and not in a weird way, uh, my attention was distracted by someone out there that was worshiping, and I was like, God, I'm up here singing. I'm up here literally holding a guitar and leading this room full of people to your heart, and I don't have that. You, you ever seen somebody that worships different? You know that they've been pulled up out of a low place. How many of y'all have been rescued from a low place? Like, you know you should. Let me, let me rephrase it. Where's all my never should have made it at? Like, you know you never should have made it. See, there's a different way of worshiping. So that's why we always say don't judge someone's passion until you know their past. And I remember seeing this person and afterwards I was in a group of friends and I said, hey, what is your story? And I asked this question, why do you worship? Let me ask you that question. Across all of our locations, why do you worship? Make it personal. Why do you worship? Because I know why I worship because I never should have made it. Almost aborted twice in a messed up situation. I know why I get up every morning and take a breath in and realize that I have another breath to worship the Lord. And when we worship, we're simply giving God his breath back. And so we're worshiping him. And I saw this person. I said, why do you worship? And she began to tell me her story. And she said, as a little girl, I felt the presence of God wrap me up like a blanket. And I, I lean into those moments because he was good then. All the way through all the struggles and situations, he was good all throughout. And he remains good now. I know why I worship because my story depended, my life depended upon him. In July 10th of this year, I will celebrate 18 years with that girl because I saw her out there and I said, I like the way you worship. Okay. It's true though. It is true. We also made history this weekend. Our Hope City Worship family released another new single called Only For Your Glory. You can download it everywhere. And we have a music video that just dropped. Look at the screens. I think it's gonna bless you. Can we give it up for Hope City Worship, our foundation of worship? All right, let's jump in. Awesome. All right, our third layer of our foundation is where we are right now, our weekend experiences, which are powerful. Whether you are here at one of our other locations online in Tanzania, not Missouri, wherever you are, our weekend services are full of people that are far from God that have never experienced the presence of God before, don't know anything about what's going on except for they walk away with the cat thing and the I like the way you worship thing, all of that. And then they're also full of people that have experienced the presence of God and are deeply rooted in the word of God and want to see revival. The amazing thing about this is that no matter, no matter which side of that that you sit on in this place, God is in this place with you and we want you to know God personally yeah, right yes, where you yes, are yes. we want you to experience his presence because the truth is that when we gather together no matter where you come from you have the opportunity to be changed by the presence yeah. of God the goodness of God chases after each and every one of us. And we want everyone to gather, to come together and embrace where we are so that God can take us to someplace new because of his love for us and because of his goodness. And these weekend experiences when we gather in his name, whether you're far from God, maybe you got caught up in the prodigal life and you're coming back home. Maybe someone said, try church one more time. Or maybe you're a seasoned saint. You've been walking with the Lord for 40, 50 years. The truth is there's room for you. And our weekend services, and I want you to hear this across all of our locations, we have a no throwaway service mentality. Right. Every service matters because people matter to God. Right. And because people matter to God, they matter to us. So every experience that we have, that we've been entrusted with, when we gather in his name and we show up and we worship and a word is, is preached and you can go back out with practical things that you can apply, the weekend experiences, the weekend services are, are, are a, a place where we can uh, learn some things and then go run the play. Yeah. It's almost like the huddle. And, and so uh, we preach this and we live it. Yeah. 
And uh, now I am an extrovert, so I like to talk to everybody. We talked about my friend Steve at the gas pump last week. I talked to everybody. I mean, I was at H-E-B the other day grabbing something, and I was talking to this guy, and I didn't realize he, he had AirPods in. He was like, oh, and he didn't know I was talking to him. I was like, sorry, man, <laughs> because I talked to everybody. I minister to everybody. That's just part of my personality. And, and we say be a bringer. The truth is just what if your call, your purpose, what if that person's connected to your destiny? And you can invite them to a weekend experience for them to come in and be romance. Romans chapter two, verse four, the goodness and love of God draws a man's heart to a place of freedom. What if your invite, what if that, hey, I'll give you a ride, changes a family, changes a destiny, changes a marriage. Come on, somebody should clap, changes their life. So we had a guy come to our house and uh, it was nine o'clock at night, it was dark. And he, uh, I opened the door and I was gonna say, hey man, it's kind of late. And he was like, I just noticed you have a whole yard full of weeds out there. And I was like, how? It's pitch black. I didn't even... And he went through his spiel and you know, we can grass, you know, green up your grass and we can help you. And I'll be honest, I, I, wanted, I wanted to be super transparent. Uh, that's the way we lead. Uh, I, I wasn't as kind as I, I, I wished I was. And I stood there and I said, hey buddy, just so you know, you shouldn't be knocking on people's doors at nine o'clock at night. It's pitch black outside. You can't see the weeds. Come back at four o'clock. Uh, uh, just your whole pitch. I don't know how long you've been doing this, but the way you approached it was wrong. I mean, I just wasn't, I just didn't handle it right. I shut the door. I was like, oh, and I look over and my 11 year old daughter goes, well, that's not the way Jesus would have handled it. <laughs> and I said, why are you awake? You should be, you should be asleep. And so I go in the back and Jackie's like, babe, I was watching on the ring doorbell. You who could have been a little kinder. And I was like, oh, so I jumped in my Jeep with Finley and we drove all over the neighborhood and we're trying to find him. And I see him and he sees us and he's like, oh, and I was like, <laughs> like we're gonna run it down. Like jump on him like a spider monkey, Finley. <laughs> like, no, instead we jumped out and I said, man, let me give you some tips. I actually did sales for a long time and, and then I'm gonna bless you with a tip. So I tucked a little $5 spot and I'm just kidding. I gave him a $100 bill. And then I said, listen, I want you to know God's for you. I prayed with him and we invited him to church because we believe the weekend experiences matter because people matter to God. So that's another one of our foundations. So let's celebrate our weekends that we gather together. Come on, celebrate you, celebrate all that we do. All right, babe. Number four. All right, so our fourth layer is a big one. This is a big one for Hope City, and so that is our Hope City outreach Let's and our go. Hope City missions. Come on. All right, come on. If you have been a part of any of our outreaches here at Hope City or part of our missions outreaches, they are incredible. It is legitimately the heartbeat of Hope City. Mark 16, verse 15 says, and then he told them, go I love that. into all the world and preach the good news to everyone everyone. Does that sound like a suggestion? No. No, that wasn't a suggestion. He said, go. He said, go, go and see how you can share the gospel with people. And one of the most incredible ways that we do it at Help City is recognizing the need in our communities and out in the places that we work in all of the different locations that are already reaching people in our city. And we jump in and we share the good news of Jesus. It's powerful. Uh, Anthony and Michelle Miner are our Hope City director, mission directors. Yeah. We did a touch point with them last week. There's so much fire, there's so much passion, there's so much anticipation and expectation for 2022 and what God is going to do. And, and I just, we're just gonna say this, thank you. Because you set the pace. Thank you for the way you've given. Our church has been uh, uh, so full of radical generosity since day one. We've literally reached people by the hundreds of thousands because of the way you've given. And maybe you're like, well, I don't have that much to give, but we have an army, y'all. Yeah. There's thousands and thousands of people that are giving and we're literally able to do damage to the kingdom of darkness, romance people to the heart of God. And so there is opportunity. If you're sitting on the sidelines wondering, well, how do I get involved? You can go to hopecity.com slash growth track. You can go through growth track first. Then we're gonna talk a little bit more about dream team and stuff. But the truth is there's a way for you to get connected and serve. The Bible says it's better to give than it is to receive. There's something about going and helping the widows, the orphans, and the poor, and we're doing it all. I'm going to give you some stats from 2021. This is going to be a great opportunity for you to shout. We completed in 2021 207 total serve projects. Come on, you should shout right there. Over 4,100 volunteers served. Let's go. 16,600 hours were served. Over 200,000 families served with food, water, and essential items. Let's go. That's 2021. Now, since 
the inception of Hope City, the past seven years, let me give you some incredible stats. Uh, again, you guys have set the pace, and because of your ra radical generosity, uh, locally, nationally, and globally, we've been able to reach people far from God. We've been able to plant churches. We've been able to do so much for the kingdom because of your generosity. In local missions, we've given away $2,139,897. Somebody should shout. That's you. In national missions, we've given away $2,325,006 towards national mission projects. We're a partner with things like the LA Dream Center and Dream Centers around the nation. Hope City is one of the first ones that says we'll sow towards it because it's been there because of your generosity. We've given away $1,391,549 to global missions. Through Convoy of Hope, we've been able to reach our community and around the world. Through, through One Hope, we've been able to print uh, booklets and Bibles for so many different countries for, for children all over the world so they can get the good news, which means the gospel. And as well, we've also given away $1,360,000 in 59, sorry, $1,360,059 to disaster relief. We are boots on the ground. We're a Hope City Army, airboats rescuing people because of the way you give. So thank you for the way you've given. And to some of you, maybe those are just a lot of numbers, but for those of you that ever wonder where your giving goes, this is it. In seven years, millions of dollars went in to missions and outreaches and helping people spread the gospel. And that scripture, it, yeah, it's okay, you can clap, that's good. I'll take that clap. That's good. We'll take it. Mark 16, where it, we just talked about, where it says, go into all the world. We like to think about that go, meaning get out. It means get out, of your, get out of your home. Get out of your comfort zone. Get out of the place where you feel nice and squishy and cozy and be willing to make yourself a little uncomfortable to spread the mission of Jesus, Let's go. to spread the hope that we know of, right? To share that hope that we know. Isaiah 61 verse 1 says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord yes. is on me, is on you, because the Lord has anointed us to proclaim good news yes. to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives, and release from darkness from prisoners. That is a powerful, a powerful command that we have been given to go. Amen? Let's go. Amen. Amen. We want to share with you a really personal story. It's Jessica's story. If you want to watch the screens. My father passed away when I was two, and my mom was a widow with four kids. No matter how little we had, I always still saw her helping others. And so she didn't have money. There were no, there was no food. And then there was a knock at the door. And this tall man, his name was Link. He and his family came through the door and they had food. They had a big turkey for us. That stayed with me my whole life to this very day. And I'm just so thankful someone chose to do something. Someone chose to be intentional for our family. We don't see every day the poverty that truly exists in Houston. Right down the street in Third Ward and Fifth Ward, you'll see that some of these homes look like third world countries. These kids need food. They truly live in a food desert and Kids Mills is the bridge that provides the food. So Kids Mills is an amazing organization that feeds about 6,800 children right now. So I thought I was just helping deliver food. I thought I was making a sandwich for these children. They changed my life. Like we think we're changing their lives, but they change our lives. Hope is here with Kids Mills. Hope is here in the city of Houston and beyond. Not just as Hope City, but as a big C church. And we get to change the world together. So my why for serving, um, it's something deep that I learned um, at Hope City when I came here. It was the first time that I was told that I was told that I was made on purpose for a purpose. I have a desire to, to help someone the way I was helped, to mentor someone the way I was helped, to say yes. Time is just so precious, and if we just open our hearts to what God's placed there, um, I think that we will change the world. That's what Hope City is about. Let's go. That's Jessica's story. Can we also celebrate every single person who has sown into, served, and been a part of outreach and missions here at Hope City. All right, number five, our fifth layer, and this is huge. You can belong even before you believe. There's something about being connected more than just serving. 
the truth is you do have a next step. I keep plugging growth track because that is a next step. Because if you're sitting on the sidelines saying, I know I have a gift, I know I have a purpose, we do want you to know God, find freedom, discover your purpose and make a difference. And how you do that, our fifth layer is the dream team. That's a part of our massive foundation. Give it up. If you're on the dream team, make some noise. Now, if you're new to Hope City, you're like, what's the dream team? Well, it's more than, than just people that serve and volunteer. It's a family. And the truth is our dream team are people that week in and week out make all this possible. Set up the banners. We transform a gym here and at Cinco into an auditorium, into a church. Week in and week out in the parking lot making coffee. Our dream team is family. John Maxwell, Papa Maxwell had a phrase that he coined and we've all heard it. Teamwork makes the... Teamwork. And the truth is our dream team makes this go. It's true. In 1 Corinthians 3.9 it says, for we are co-workers. Yeah. That means obviously we work together, that we get to serve in God's service. And it says you are God's field, God's building. You are the place where God works through. And that is awesome because we get to serve people together. Can we just celebrate our Come dream team? our dream team. We love it. You can go to hopecity.com slash dream team if you want more information on how you can jump in and be a part as well. All right, our sixth layer, it's a special one. Again, they're all special. We love all of them. However, our sixth one is families. Let's go. So we are pastors, but we are also mom and dad to four amazing kiddos. So family is huge for us. But at Hope City, we believe in families. That means we believe in the next generation from diapers all the way up to young adults. We believe in training and equipping the next generation to understand the word of God. That means that at the littlest spot in their, in their back in kids ministry, we're going to be teaching them the word. And then we will help them to understand what that means and how to apply it. Number two is to learn how to hear the Holy Spirit clearly. Because how many of you know that there is a group of little people that actually hear the Holy Spirit even more clearly than the rest of us? They're just children. They are more sensitive to the Holy Spirit than even we are. Why? Because they're a whole lot less distracted by all the stuff that we are distracted by. So we miss a great opportunity if we do not realize to train our children to hear the Holy Spirit clearly that it is a really important part of their little season. And finally, to fully find their identity in being a child of God. That's the first place they find their identity. Not in people, not even in mom and dad, but really understanding that their identity is in being a child of God. Psalm 71 verse 17 says, Oh God, you have taught me from my earliest childhood, and I constantly tell others about the wonderful things you do. And that's our heart at Hope City, is that we can help you to train them in who God says they are and in what they are capable of and what they are able to do so that when they get older, they will go and tell everyone about it, everyone the good news. And from diapers to young adults, uh, where's HCY at? Where's our young people? Where's youth? Come on, make some noise. We have such a powerful youth ministry as well because, again, this is next. Like the things that we get to be a part of, the things that we get to pour into ends up a ceiling for us, but a floor for them. So our 13 year old, he's next. Our, all the way down to our two and a half year old, they're next. But here's the truth, we're also all about in general families because the generation that has gone before us has been a strength of wisdom. And so we honor also the generation that came before us because it's so essential to not forget those who came before us that paved the way in the foundation. So yes, we believe in the next generation, but look around this room, y'all. This is multicultural, multi-generational. And I love what the Bible says in Psalms 100 verse five. It says, for the Lord is good and his love endures forever. And this is our foundation on families. His faithfulness continues through all generations. And so whether you're the oldest in the room or the youngest, you have a place here because we believe in families. Can we celebrate the value and the family of God here at Hope City? And All right, the number seven. seventh and final foundational layer that has made such an impact on the ability to belong here at Hope City this is, is our groups. Let's go. Yeah. How many Somebody of you make some noise. have been a part of a group at Hope City? Come on. 
It is amazing because people truly can belong. Matthew 18, 20 says, for where two or three gather in my name, there I am with them. And our connect groups, they meet all over the city, all over the world, honestly, all across the internet as well. We have groups everywhere and they give us the the ability to belong, to belong to a group of people with a community of people that walk with us through life, that pray with us through the fires and that celebrate with us through the victories. But most importantly, they provide us that tight knit ability to grow deeper in relationship and deeper in connection to God, most importantly. And the truth is our, our church is big enough to make a difference. Our church is large enough to do serious damage to the kingdom of darkness, but our groups make our church small enough to know each other. Uh, we did a marriage group for the past couple semesters, and I remember uh, there was a girl on our team who at the end of, or at our group said, hey guys, I'm having surgery this week. And our group rallied. And when she came home, she had diapers and wipes, DoorDash cards. They didn't have to go out and, and worry about food and groceries because our group, again, we have a church large enough to serve a city but small enough to know each other through groups. A lot of times churches depend on groups, uh, or or sorry, groups depend on churches to feed the groups. It's actually the opposite here. Our groups actually feed our church. It is a non-threatening environment. Maybe there are people that have church hurt that would never come back to church that say, hey, yeah, I'll come to your group. And there's trust equity that's developed in that group. And so the truth is, uh, and we're fired up because this weekend, you can actually sign up for groups this weekend. Next weekend is groups weekend where we launch groups. And then the first week of February is when groups actually kick off. How many guys have been through freedom? Come on, your life was changed. Because at the end of semesters at freedom, we actually have a freedom conference where we gather together. There is still time to sign up. There's even still time to sign up to lead a group. So whether it's freedom, whether it's the Chihuahua walking group, whichever group you want to be a part of, there's a place for you. Can we celebrate the power and the connection that we have at Hope City in our groups? So the last one, I have to stand up. I'm, I'm, I'm fired up. So we're at the very, very beginning of year number seven, which does mean completeness. There is something about God bringing this, this incredible church to a place of flourishing where he has brought it. And again, I said it earlier, every beginning has an end and every end has a beginning. We honor where we've been, we build from there. But as we approach the end of the year and we we don't just survive 2022, but we actually, with boldness and audacious faith, take on 2022. How many guys believe, you really believe, not with all the noise around you, but with great audacious faith that 2022 is gonna be your year? Come on, 2022 is gonna be your family's year, our church family's year. So the year of completeness, as we redirect momentum, close your eyes for just a moment, seven layers of foundation, seven layers of just incredible growth and miracles and revival and signs and wonders. Seven years where thousands and thousands and thousands of people have been romanced to Jesus and given their lives to God and thousands have been, thousands have been water baptized and thousands more have been restored. God, thank you for the past seven years where hope was released to a city and then to the nation and then to the world. We literally get DMs and emails and messages every day from people that watch from all over the world and locally that have been impacted because your breath, your supernatural power was released seven years ago, 2015. But God, as we get through this year, not on cruise control or survival mode, but as we get to the end of this year and we approach 2023, one year from now, and we enter into year number eight. Year number eight means new beginnings. And the Bible says in Luke chapter one, verse 27, for nothing will be impossible with God. Isaiah chapter 43, verse 19, talks about a new thing beginning. And it's already begun. And then the question is asked, do you not see it? Look at me really quick. I've done a new thing. They're gonna put it on the screens. I've done a new thing. And it's already begun. Do you not see it? It's really easy to get caught up in the distractions and the noise around us. Remember, Peter walked on water. The only other documented man to walk on water other than Jesus until he got distracted. As a church family, we're determined to take on this year of completion 
with boldness and fire and expectation of what God is gonna do in 2023. Because in 2023, every single day on 10 and Beltway 8, 550 to 600,000 cars drive by a property that God blessed us with called the Silos. Over a million people drive by. Do you not see it? I'm doing a new thing. I will make a pathway through the wilderness and create rivers in the dry wasteland. Soon you're gonna see these silos painted. Soon you're gonna see a, a, a marquee up on it. And then soon you're gonna see a green space and a building that's gonna house thousands of people because this is still good ground. Hope City is still doing great things for the kingdom and we're stepping into eight and beyond. So we have seven layers, but the truth is we have an eighth layer and it's called a new beginning. Chapter two, revival, miracles. I keep saying it, people are gonna stop by here with their RVs because MD Anderson couldn't help them, but they walk in here and realize a tumor shrank and cancer disappeared and diabetes was reversed and heart disease was healed. Can you see it? Come on, can you see it? It's great faith rising. Never been built on a person never been built on a personality. Grateful for the yes of the Fosters. Grateful for the yes of all those who came before us that built this incredible work that have handprints and initials dried in the concrete in the foundation. But through the filter of faith, we are fired up for where God is taking us. It's a beacon of hope, the silos to our, to our city. And it doesn't, ooh, it does not stop there because then there's Sealy and Columbus and Magnolia. Come on, somebody, in Austin and New Bron. Why not? Can we have greater faith to reach our state, to reach our nation, and reach the world? Will you stand to your feet? God, thank you for the seven layers of foundation that we build upon. Thank you for eight, the new beginning that we're going to step into next year when we huh, do the grand opening of the silos. Thank you, God, for your faithfulness. Thank you for the radical generosity of people who have dug their heels in and said, this is my church. This is my family. God, thank you for the expectation of great faith. And God, we're going to pray bold prayers this year. We're going to pray sun stand still sort of prayers this year believing God that the best days are ahead of us because there's a reason why our windshield is bigger than our rear view mirror. You're far more interested in our past. Our, our, you're far more interested in our future than our past. We build from where we've been, we focus on where we are now, and we're excited about where you're taking us because we are grateful for your goodness, your mercy, your grace. If you're here today, you can put your hands down with eye, every eye closed just for a moment. Maybe you're here and you say, Daniel, the truth is we're honoring the past, but my past is messy. My past is really, really broken. And I came today, and the truth is I don't know Jesus as my savior. The reason we do all of this week in and week out is because we wanna romance and be a part of romancing people to the heart of God. Again, here at Hope City, we don't pray prayers for symbolic reasons, but we pray according to Romans chapter 10, verse nine and 10, it says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and you will be saved. We're not just praying to pray, but when you pray, God has already written victory in your story and everything is about to shift. Or maybe you're here or you're at Cinco or you're at the Woodlands or you're watching online. You say, the truth is, Daniel, I, I used to know Jesus and I got caught up in the prodigal life. And I fell away, but I came back today. Something has been stirring in me that today's my day to get things right with Jesus. I'm going to count to three. We won't embarrass you. At the end, our host will come out and give you a next step of discipleship. But your first step is to acknowledge today's the day I want to give my life to Jesus or rededicate. One, today's my day. I want to surrender. I want to know God more. Two, I want to find freedom. I want to discover my purpose. And I ultimately want to make a difference. Three, if that's you, lift up your hand. I'm looking all over the room. We're looking at Cinco. We're looking at Woodlands. I see your hand. I see your hand. Hand, 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 hand. Leave it up. Leave it up. I see your hand. I see you here. I see you over there. Back here. Thank you, guys. I see you. And most importantly, God sees you. So as a church family, we're about to pray. And I want everybody to pray this prayer, whether you've prayed it or not. Across all of our locations, online, you can type yes to Jesus. Our team and moderators are going to help you. Say this out loud. Jesus, it's me. I've been living for me. And it's no longer working. From today on, I choose to live for you. Every sin, every mistake, all my failures, I surrender them to you. And from today on, I choose to live for you. You are my father. You are my savior. 
and you are my Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, Hope City, can we give God praise because he's good.